taken a short journey today and it's just down the road it's about a mile and a half down the road isn't it really about that yeah <coughs> we could walk <coughs> admittedly but, but we've got Poppy with us and Poppy can't come in museum so shorter I didn't really want to leave her just here on her own on the site so she's coming with us in the van because she can go around the battlefield can't she yeah so we're going to Culloden battlefield as you probably guessed I oh, will take a trip around the visitor centre now I seem to remember uh, there's a museum in the visitor centre I seem to remember that that doesn't allow you to film in there no. yeah two minutes up the road spots over here yeah we? yeah yeah well, I was right you, you can't film in this there's no photography or, or filming no it's well worth yeah. a visit definitely worth a visit um, you, I think every time we've been we've learnt a little bit more about Scottish uh, and the history about the uprising yeah. and it's it's not as com it's not as straightforward as a lot of people seem to think it's not it wasn't just the English against the Scots and no no it's fight a fight for the the crown really wasn't right it? for the crown we have got a, a guidebook guide here which are, yeah which is very good really yeah got all the history in it it's yeah. really good yeah, yeah. I, I think the thing it it was was the english um powers that be ignoring uh the differences between the two countries that was one of the factors obviously yeah. um famines yeah yeah and it's also the, f the factor of the covenanters as well. It was, yeah, I mean, we were speaking to one of the guides in there, wasn't he? Yeah. And he really knew his stuff. And uh, yeah. it's quite a complex story, all, all the different things were going on, the religion, yeah. Presbyterians in Scotland. And yeah. Yeah, it's easy to forget that Culloden is actually in the war grave. Anyway, it's a battlefield, obviously. People died out here. It's, it's you can sort of imagine what it was like here, can't you? But it, it was foggier yeah. on yes. the day of the battle. I think the last time we came, it was actually it was very misty, wasn't it? Yeah. Not just wet, but misty. Yeah. The first time we ever came, there wasn't a museum or anything, was there? It was just the the stones that you see. Uh, later on, like a little hut. Yeah, so, uh, so uh, the tour for the viewers will be a bit like that, won't it? <laughs> because <laughs> yes, that's right. You can't go and find anything in this thing. I'll say a little bit about the uh, display. It's a little bit depleted, I think, from last time we were there because they they had a load of projectors and uh, one of the displays was showing what family life was like in and around the time of the battle, you know, in, in Inverness. Yeah. And all they've got really there is storyboards and that's where our, our guide came up and started chatting to us and we, we learned an awful lot from from, from, him. from him just to, yeah. oh. you know. And it's, it, it's easy to sort of focus on the kings and uh, princes involved in the in the battle but this was something that was dreadful you know it affected everyone yes that's right yeah yeah so there's one particular house in Inverness wasn't there that uh, they showed he's got showed a picture of yeah. and that saw all this going on around it yeah yeah so you've got these flags here and they go all along here and this marks the government line so there on here. The plaque here says this was where the Argyleshire men were here. Which also sort of points out that there were <laughs> there were Scottish troops on the government on the side government as well. Side, yeah, that really highlights it, doesn't it? Yeah. So Jacobite supporters seeking to restore the Stuart monarchy to the British thrones gathered to fight the Duke of Cumberland's government troops. It was the last pitched battle on British soil and in less than an hour around 1,600 men were slain. 1,500 of them were Jacobites. 
So I'm saying that it just then goes on to say about the Culloden Visitor Centre, which you really should visit to get yeah, the full picture. picture yeah. But there's a, there was a really good, um, all um, what would you call it, all surround um, video uh, video yeah, going yeah, on on, four on the four walls, and yeah. it, you see the the government troops standing here in their red coats, all lined up with their muskets and the cannonballs, and yes. the, the Highland troops over there with their uh, broadswords and what they call targers, the the shields. Yeah. And yeah. They, they stood there for what seemed like absolutely ages, shouting at the government troops. And all the government troops did was just open fire with cannonball and musket on them. Mm. Yeah. And they waited and waited and waited until they finally charged. And they ran, obviously ran across that field. You probably can't see it on the GoPro, but that must be four or five hundred yards yeah easily yeah easily and they ran across this field in a hail of musket and cannonball yeah so it's no wonder they were cut down the british troops just the government troops stood here just uh, it was like machine gun fire basically yeah. with muskets and they had time to reload yeah yeah and they only lost a hundred and the others lost, lost a hundred yeah i mean thousand. they they showed the uh, the Jacobite troops had crossed about halfway before they actually sh- t- took a shot. Yeah. It was carnage, really. It was, yeah. So it says, 16th of April, 1746. In this area, the most ferocious hand-to-hand fighting took place at the height of the battle. Historians believe that around 700 Jacobite soldiers were killed or wounded here in just a few minutes of fighting. The Jacobite charge had broken the government front line, but then they were forced back with catastrophic consequences. So what they find here, archaeologists find hacked mus- musket balls, pistol, pistol balls and ripped off buttons. Clear evidence of a desperate close-range fight. Going that way. Yeah. Barrel. Barrel. 325. 325 men. The other thing is how long the government line is as well. It's not all the way down there. Yeah. It's uh, Munro's. We, we're here. 426. 426 of them, yeah. Yeah, so we're still on the uh, government front line. It said regiments here kept up the pressure on the advancing Jacobites with heavy artillery and musket fire. As the Jacobites retreated, the front line moved forward to sweep the battlefield with fixed bayonets. So basically they went around stabbing people who were dying. Yeah. And uh, it says this heather moorland was covered in commercial forestry for over 100 years until 1983. The trees are now gone, but the ground has been so disturbed that archaeological surveys have proved impossible. Its secrets lie undiscovered. That's that bit there. Yeah, that's why the ground sunk a bit there, isn't it? Yeah. The Scots Fusiliers were here, 358 of them. them. Poppy's enjoying herself, lots of yeah. smells. So on this corner flag here, we've got Chomley. Is it Chomley? So that Pulteney, Kingston and Cob- Cobain. Coburn. The price Problem. is the easy one. At the price, and price. <laughs> I can say that. This is, this is what we had, I think, when we first came, and they're just these, uh, quite difficult to read. What it says is this headstone marks the grave, locally believed, to be the resting place of the McDonald's who fell in action during the battle, and the stone was erected by members of the Clan Donald Centre to honour all McDonald's killed at Culloden and in something service. So a lot of the gravestones obviously were placed here long after the battle, mm. sometimes hundreds of years after the battle. I think this is the place where Alistair MacLeod of Kepok was wounded and it's says leading to, you know, I don't know, I think it says his death but obviously I can't read the rest of it. Yeah. Picture of some wildflowers in the heather. We've now reached the Jacobite line. Here we've got uh, Clan Chatton, the Farquharsons, McLachlan, McLeans, McLeods, Chisholms, 
Van Ranald, Capoc, Glen Gary, Glen Bucket, and Duke of Perths down here. So down there is the Jacobite line. So here stood the Frasers. 400 of them. 400, yeah. I've never seen Outland. Eh? They were Jamie Frasers, Frasers, weren't they? they? Yeah, yeah. Fraser. Yeah. So it's saying here, when the Highland Charge began, the right flank was able to move quickly. But the middle and the left were slowed down by boggy conditions. And uh, what the National Trust for Scotland are trying to do is to restore the land to how it might have been back then. It's, it's drier than it was then. Like that, wouldn't they? So yeah, can you imagine charging like across a battlefield and coming across something like oh, that? Right. Yeah, so John Roy Stewart's were here. Two hundred of them. Somewhere close to the middle. Yeah, so we had the Stuarts of Appin and the Macleans here. Yeah, Appin Regiment. Don't know. We were just saying we don't know how interesting this is for people, but I suspect some of our viewers may have relatives. Ancestors. Yeah, so the Camerons here. Yes, Elizabeth. So 16th of April 1746 the first shots were fired by the Jacobites from here and the government troops responded with their own cannon fire to try and destroy the Jacobite guns. Some Jacobites suffered terrible injuries as they stood in line desperately waiting for the order, order to charge. So today archaeologists found a small metal pendant cross in this area thought to have been lost by a Jacobite soldier in the confusion of the charge or perhaps it was when he was fleeing the battle. So we've reached the end of the Jacobite line here. The Athol men were here, 500 of them. And you actually see now that uh, it's quite a well chosen place for a battle. You know, it's like on a table, isn't it? On a, yeah. on a plateau. Yeah, it is. The ground falls off behind there. I think if you were the Jacobite commanders, you'd be quite pleased with your position here. You would be, but yeah. It's that foggy bit in the middle. But then you probably didn't survey the ground in the middle, did you? I think the film we watched in the visitor centre um, showed them in an open field, you know, exchanging cannonball and musket with each other. But the reality probably was a bit more like this. So you don't know what you were charging into. The government forces just stood there and well, well, fired on them. This wall featured in the uh, in the did. film. Yeah, with some uh, government soldiers just uh, firing at them from yeah, the wall. as they were running along. Yeah. So we think that some of the government soldiers had hidden behind these walls and were firing on the Jacobite troops crossing the field over there oh, that way. Right, so the sign here says 16th of April 1746. The Highland Charge began. From here, the Jacobites were able to fire their muskets as they gathered speed, charging at the government army, yelling and shouting. And it says that archaeologists have found items here relating to artillery, suggesting that the Jacobites were pounded by numerous rounds of canister shots, that's cans full of musket balls or grape shot fired from government field guns, so anti-personnel weapons, basically, yeah, yeah, which yeah. would have cut them down. It's, I might be wrong here, but it, it sounds like the Jacobites were fighting a different war. Yeah, yeah. Whereas the, the government forces were more well, organised. equipment at um, the time. Yeah, yeah. and uh, chief of the Magillaravi fell here. Okay. We're making our way. I'm glad you can see some of the bog here, can you? Yeah. We're making our way to the memorial. Which was what was here when we very first came, wasn't it? With these stones and this memorial. Yeah. There's no visitor centre. No. There's a whole uh, number of stones here. I don't know if I've, if I've noticed these before. Some of the names are a bit difficult to read, but that says the Athol Highlanders are here, so the Maclean's and McClacklin. That's to the Stuarts of Appin. Oh, yeah. No idea what that is. Camerons. Oh, is it? Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to put some little 
Clan Macintosh. Mum's maiden name is Mackin. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's Irish, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. But I didn't a lot of. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the Scots come from Ireland originally. Mixed clans. Mixed clans. So someone from the clan Mac Mac Macmillan has left. Uh, so people are leaving money on the top there. So this is the monument to the Battle of Culloden, the graves of the gallant Highlanders who fought for Scotland and Prince Charlie are marked by the names of their clans. And there's carvings in the wall there. 19, what's that say? 1906? No. This is 1906, the grave, headstones and Ken word was yeah uh, erected by public subscription yeah so this was built in 1906 oh, this cairn was placed in the care of the trust in 1944 by Hector Forbes of Culloden it was erected in 1881 by his kinsman Duncan Forbes of Culloden who also set up the headstones on the surrounding graves of the clans yes yeah, so that's 1881 and they put in yeah Yeah. And that, that little stone inside there, 1906. Yeah. So. You're going to wonder about that. Smile, say cheese. Cheese. No, it wouldn't be complete without headstone to Clan Fraser. Have a look round. Right, so it says here they are reopening the Lianoch cottage to the public over the next few months skilled tradespeople will be working on the cottage repointing the masonry repairing the roof and laying a new floor it was built in the early 18th century and seen many changes over the time the cottage was occupied until 1912 when it fell into disrepair only a few timbers and stones of the original building remain 1920s and 30s cottage cottage was cared for by the Gallic Society of Inverness and in 1944 Leonard was given to the National Trust for Scotland by Hector Forbes. By 1970s the cottage had become the Culloden Battlefield Museum. So it says over 180,000 people visit Culloden each year and your support helps us look after this special site. I've grown from that just being a museum. Yeah so that was a museum you had yeah. the, this, the stones. Yeah. Now they've got this magnificent visitor centre, yeah. which I'm really disappointed I couldn't show you, but it's very good. It's been good. Hope you've enjoyed our walk. But that's it for now. If you enjoyed the video, give us a thumbs up, remember to subscribe, and hit the notifications icon, and you'll get updates when we visit more properties. Yep. There's the horses in the field. Yeah, on the roof. <laughs> Still plenty of open space here. Downstairs. Oh yeah, sound effects to go with it.